What if I told you you could use a white toner transfer printer to create a sublimation design on a t-shirt? In today's episode, I'll take you through the entire sublimation process to decorate a shirt and a coffee mug using Recoma's Luminaris 200 white toner transfer printer. Along the way, I'll also show you how to cleanly and precisely transfer your design using only a heat press. Let's get started. Roll the intro. Sublimation. Let's quickly talk about what sublimation printing is and why it's so popular. During sublimation printing, specially formulated toner is heated until it turns into a gaseous liquid that transfers from a piece of paper onto a polyester garment or poly-coated surface. The toner then cools and re-solidifies, effectively becoming part of whatever you transfer your design onto. Sublimation is the only printing method that forms a permanent bond between the toner and your substrate. This means that sublimation printed designs last longer than any other printing method and ensures that the feel of the printing area is indistinguishable from the rest of the fabric. These are the materials you're gonna need for the project. Over here for the shirt and over here for the mugs. I'm gonna give you three seconds to take a screenshot. Okay, three seconds are up. Let's get to it. To get our designs ready to print, we're gonna open up our VividRib software and let's select the Luminaris 200 from the drop-down menu. And since we're doing sublimation, we're gonna go with the CMYK tab. Next, we go to the plus sign to import our design. It's gonna be the Everglades fishing design right here. Just to make it easier, I'm gonna go fit to page. And here, I'm gonna change it to nine inches from top to bottom, so that'll make it a seven by nine. Since we're doing sublimation, we're gonna mirror the design. And what that does is when it prints, I'm able to put this onto the shirt and it'll be right side up. Now we're gonna ensure that our page size right here, 8.5 by 11 inch lettering, we're gonna do our tray number one as our input tray. And lastly, paper type is plain, and that's it for the queue window. Now we're gonna go over to our job tab and we're gonna click on color adjust. Let's bring our brightness to 10 and our saturation to five. Let's hit okay. And literally all I have to do now in order to print is just go over to the printing and then it'll print the design. Now, for the mug, this is the same exact process. We're using the same paper, same everything. The only difference is, from top to bottom, I saw that 2.75 inches was perfect. And what I'll do, just so I don't waste paper, I'll print a few of them. So we'll go over here to copies, and over on the number of columns, we're gonna do three columns, and the number of rows, we're gonna do three as well. I'm gonna do a half inch on the column spacing and a half inch on the row spacing. That way I have space to cut. I'm gonna click OK, and there we go. Typically to do sublimation, you would need to invest in another printer and additional software. But the beauty of the Luminaris 200 is that to do sublimation, all you need to do is to switch out to cartridges. These sublimation cartridges are specially designed to be compatible with the Luminaris 200 white toner transfer printer, and they're linked in the description below. Now, let me show you how easy it is to change out the cartridges. We're gonna open up our printer, remove the CMYK toner cartridges, and replace them with the sublimation dye toner. Once all four cartridges are changed, we're gonna close it. All we have left is to load our printer with regular printer paper. We're gonna make sure that the end cap is on the slot for paper. So we're gonna take this tab and bring it down one, and we're gonna load the tray. All right, now that we have our printer set up for sublimation, it's time to click print. All right, so I'm over here now with my Recoma Auto Open 60 by 20 heat press, and I've already got my temperature set up at 385 degrees Fahrenheit, and I have the timer set for five seconds. This is gonna be so that I can get the wrinkles out of my shirt and the moisture. After that, I'm gonna change it to 50 seconds, and that's where I'm gonna do my sublimation. I've got both my Teflon sheets ready to go. One of them, I've folded it. I'm gonna put it in between the shirt, and the reason for that is if I use the print method without this in the middle, the toner is gonna bleed through the shirt. So you wanna prevent that. Now I have my design. We'll place it just like we do with any other printing project. Four fingers from the collar, okay. And then we'll grab our regular Teflon sheet, place it on top, and we're ready to press. Hey guys, Future Drew here. While I was doing the shirts, I realized that when I did it with this one, 
there was a little bit of a bleeding here on the corners. You saw a little bit of a line. But what I did was I went ahead and I trimmed all the edges. And with this one, it came out perfectly. So when doing sublimation, make sure you trim your paper. And now back to the video. All right, so we've done our sublimation on our shirt. Now let's go ahead and do it on our mug. I have my sublimation mug right here, which is poly coated. This will allow for the transfer of the design onto the mug. And I've got my Recoma mug press right here. I have my designs already printed out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut one of these out. And then I'm gonna tape it onto the mug. I've got my mug heat press right here. My temperature sets to 390 degrees Fahrenheit for 180 seconds. And I've already got the pressure on the clamp perfectly set. I'm gonna use a Teflon sheet that I've already pre-cut so that it fits perfectly onto the mug press and we'll get ready to press. All right, so I've pressed my mug and now I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool for five minutes. All right, that's it for today. If you're looking for more inspiration for your next printing project or to get some more printing advice, then be sure to check us out on Facebook and join our embroidery and printing business help group. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook for informative and entertaining content. And if there's any other ideas you'd like to see in a future episode of Racoma Prints, then be sure to leave it in the comments section below. Best of luck, and I'll see you in the next one.